to the channel. So today is Sunday, January 16th, 2022. Um, I just uploaded the video with the time lapse from the last storm. And unfortunately, when I came out at the beginning, it was a little dark out here. So I thought I'd come out a little earlier. But uh, as you can see, the uh, driveway's got a little bit of snow on it. Nothing major. Um, I could have turned it on a few nights ago and I didn't. Um, it's been really cold here, uh, zero degrees last night, pretty much all night. And, you know, f to melt this little bit off, I really just didn't see the uh, the benefit in, in running it and using all that fuel and all of that just for this. And most of it, in most areas, it's pretty dry. But once again, uh, we're expecting another pretty good storm here in the next uh, few hours. This one is not... A lake effect event um, this I believe is moving up from the south from what it looks like so it should be a little bit easier for the meteorologists to predict uh, they're calling for the snow to begin around 8 30 9 o'clock and I'm still on the fence after the last one where I turned it on and it ran for ugh, almost a good uh, 11 12 hours before it actually started snowing if I want to turn it on early and preheat it um, I probably will I'll probably wait keep an eye on the radar and maybe around again 7 7 30 maybe I'll turn it on um, you know I'll put some screenshots up here of of the radar and the warnings and what we're looking at but yeah anyway I thought I'd just give you a uh, a quick overview of what we're starting with and then we'll see how it does uh, overnight tonight and into tomorrow they're expecting anywhere between they're saying 12 all the way up to maybe even 20 inches so who knows um, they they don't seem to be very accurate with snowfalls lately but uh, anyway you guys seem to be enjoying the one I put up there uh, today um, of the last storm so I figured I'd uh, I'd make another one I usually stick the camera right up and this window right up here and uh, yeah seems to do well so all right guys uh, I'll turn it on when I go to fire it up and we'll go from there thanks okay guys we're down here in the uh, mechanical room it is now um, seven what seven seven twenty three um, anyway the Radiant just finished a cycle. I was going to turn the snow melt on a few minutes ago, but the Radiant was running. It's not going to turn on anyway because of the way I wired it. Um, so it just literally finished. I believe the snow is coming. I'm not trusting the meteorologists this time. Uh, if you guys watched my last video, that obviously bit me a little bit. Um, so looking at the radar, I'll put a I'll put an image of the radar up here right now as I talk. Uh, I think it's coming. So they're saying eight o'clock. Um, I'm thinking maybe 8.30, but we'll give this thing a good hour head start. So we'll go ahead and turn the radiant on. I do have this in a BTU readout. So we're already coming back below 65, so the primary loop pump has already come on. And... Um, again, I've done videos, a lot of videos on these startups. I'm not going to stand down here for the next five, ten minutes and talk. I'm just going to show you real quick, um, usually what we get down to on the Aquastat. And then I'll uh, switch it over to the time lapse. If you guys are interested in learning more about this, about how it works, um, you know, the return, coming back, how that fires the primary loop pump and all of that, feel free. I've got a lot of videos. Click, um, check out the playlist, check out my channel like subscribe do all that fun stuff i've got a lot of it there so anyway we're down to 38 37 coming back the belimo valve is almost all the way open now so you're going to start to see the btus this is the combined btus multiplied by a thousand and that's for both units so at 211,000, you know you figure each unit's using about 105 so we're down to 31, which is pretty low. Um, and that makes sense because it's been pretty cold. This slab has not turned on since the last storm, which was the last video. Uh, that was January 6th. So it's been a good week and we've had a couple of nights at zero or below 
not including the wind chill. So I'm not surprised that that slab out there is really, really cold right now. So we're burning about 245,000 BTUs and we only have 70 or so uh, coming back right now. So, so far everything is uh, functioning as it should. Down to 27 coming back. That's gold. So it's going to take a little bit, uh, you know, as you can see, we've only got 70 going out. And I would say that's that's pretty normal considering how cold that glycol is coming back. That's pretty cold. So over the next 30 minutes to an hour, hour and a half, we'll slowly start to see that supply temperature increase to 75, 80, 85, 90, and eventually it'll get its way up to about 100 degrees, which is where it normally runs at once everything's up to temperature. It'll take a good two hours before this gets there and the radiant's going to come on at least at least one time during that initial startup. So, you know, typically another hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes, that radiant's going to come on, which will not shut off the snowmelt, but it puts that, it closes that bypass valve. So the, the slab will continue to circulate, but all the heat will be going to the house. The house has priority and that's the way that I've wired it. I've got other videos on how I did that. Feel free to check them out. But Anyway, uh, yeah, down to 26 coming back. Yeah, that's pretty cold. I don't know that I've ever seen it um, condense this bad. It's pretty chilly. There's actually frost on there. So, but we'll be all right. It'll uh, it'll it'll catch up. Just gonna cost a little bit more uh, BTU wise to to come up to temperature here, but. 29.4 is what we're reading as coming back into the flat plate and that's actually increasing and we're showing 70.7 going out to the slabs right now we got 137 and a half coming in from the heaters which are set at 140 and we've got 70 going back out to the heaters to be reheated that's pretty much what we're showing here so we're already down from 250,000 BTUs to 230,000 and we're already up to 32 degrees coming back. So that's how it works. I'm not going to dwell on this. I will uh, switch over to the time lapse now, let you guys enjoy that and let's see how it does on this next storm. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Okay guys, so as you can see, I put the uh, clock up in the corner there again in the window and we had turned the snow melt on right about now about 720 now i've got this uh time lapse uh sped up to 2x this time and as you can see we're almost an hour in at 820 here and it's just starting to snow but you can just start to see that the system is is starting to melt and at this point i remember looking out the window and thinking okay we're in good shape but it'll have this melted off in no time and, you know, you can even start to see the loops there. This was about 10 o'clock. And then you can start to see here shortly, the camera does not go out of focus. It's actually the snow coming down and see how it's getting blurry there. And it starts to hit. Now, this was about 11 o'clock. It starts to get a little bit overwhelmed, but it's trying at this point. And then uh, right about midnight here, it, it really started to come down. And I mean, you can look up at that street light there and just see how quick this this comes down all at once. And unfortunately, uh, the driveway really never had a chance here. Uh, you can see how quickly that is building in front of the garage door. And that was a good 10 inches thick when I went out in the morning, which you'll see here. Um, you can kind of see the, the hot spot there um, where, where it's always the warmest because all the loops are together. It's fighting. It really is. It's trying to catch up and it's melting, but then, you know, we get hit with another burst and it, it, it just totally covers it up again. So I think part of this is also because of the changes I made. Uh, I have videos on it. You can go back and check where I gave the house priority and it shuts off. Uh, you know, it basically shuts the heat going to the snowmelt off for 
15 minutes every hour and a half, I think what's happening is the snowmelt falls a little bit behind every time and it can never catch back up. So I've got some changes in the works that might try to fix that. We might bump the temperature up on the heaters. Um, I also might do some more rewiring fun to try and combat that. Uh, sorry about the snow on the window here. Again, in all the snowmelt videos I've made, this is also, I want to say, the first or maybe second time that I've ever had this happen where it was blowing so crazy that you just couldn't... Uh, you know, it couldn't melt it off the window fast enough. So about seven o'clock in the morning, I got up, I had looked out, I had noticed that it really wasn't keeping up. I grabbed the shovel and just started to clear it. Um, now it, it was still snowing pretty good. You can see how wet and slushy it is. And, uh, you know, it was trying, it really was. But at one point here, I actually cleared the window off. Um, so you can see, but from here on out, the driveway is doing fine. It's able to keep up with the snow that's still coming down. I just think that what happened was at midnight there when we had that real heavy stuff, it it couldn't, um, I'm shoveling the balcony off up top, which is why you saw that snow just randomly appearing on the driveway there. But uh, anyway, yeah, overnight when we were getting, you know, those four or five inches an hour, it, it couldn't handle it. And it just, you know, but once you got 10 or 12 inches on the driveway, I don't know it's it's capacity to handle that and to ever catch up at that point. I mean, it might, I believe if I had not come out and shoveled it and, you know, by now you can't really see the, the clock, but I think we're, we're in early afternoon on the 17th. It's actually starting to dry at this point. You'll see the dry spots there. Um, if I had not shoveled it, I believe eventually it would have melted off. Um, I do. But again, it, it would have been running all day and possibly all night just to not only melt it off, but dry it. Whereas by me coming out and shoveling, you know, it's, 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 a, it's clear and it's able to melt off that much quicker. And then I can turn the system off that much earlier because it's all dried out. And, you know, the event is basically over with at this point. Now this was getting into, uh, I want to say mid afternoon here. Um, it'll, it'll start to get, uh, dark again. And we were still getting snow at this point. I think storm totals for where I was during this, you know, we were in the 18, 19 inches. I think we actually broke a record for that day for most snow received on that day in history. You can see, if you look at the driveway, it's still coming down. Um, and the driveway is doing fine. It, it's not a problem to keep up with a normal snowfall like this. Again, I probably should have preheated it a little bit earlier. I should have turned it on earlier. And I, I probably should have had the heat a little bit higher uh, on the heaters. All things that I'm probably going to change moving forward. So at this point, the event is pretty much over. But as I'm about to show you here in a second, we're not quite done. Okay, guys, it's the uh, next morning here. Um, it is January 18th at about 7.45 a.m. And I wanted to show you guys what happens if you don't run the driveway until it's clear. Now, I did last night. The driveway was bone dry when I turned the system off. Uh, I want to say about 8 o'clock. Um, but we came out here this morning, and what had happened overnight was that we got a little bit more snow, a light snow, which normally for light stuff, I wouldn't have even turned the system on, but because the driveway was still warm, it landed, it melted, but it didn't have time to evaporate before it froze. So when we came out this morning, this is all ice. Um, you, know, you can slide around on it. So that's kind of sucks. Um, you know, again, in hindsight, I probably should have just left it on all night. Um, so I've gone ahead and turned it back on right now and hopefully the slab is still a little bit warm from last night so it will uh, it won't take long to to bring it back up but yeah this is why when when you do have something like this you got to run it till it's clear and if I guess snow is predicted in the forecast um, you got to leave it on so this is the first time I've really had this happen so I'm learning right alongside uh, you know you guys I'm, I'm sharing my uh, trials and errors here with you. So yeah, I'm going to set the camera up to do another quick time lapse and we can watch this 
melt off. Tomorrow is supposed to be 38 degrees, so um, and raining. So a lot of this is probably going to melt anyway. But I don't like that. That's all ice. It's kind of dangerous. So we'll go ahead. Uh, the heaters are on now. I'll set the camera up, and we'll uh, we'll melt it off again.